दिस इज भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत ये है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत दिस मैं हूं मनन रावल एंड यू आर वाचिंग अवर स्पेशल शो ऑन द बजट इंडिया 2021 वी हैव इनवाइटेड अवर गेस्ट द्वारकेश त्रिवेदी ही इज अ होलिस्टिक फाइनेंशियल टैक्स प्लानर with more than 20 years of experience in financial service and industry dwarkesh has extensive experience across multiple financial products dwarkesh is qualified chartered accountant and was 13th rank in all over the country in india he has also studied mba in finance in usa and has worked with uh, goldman sachs Deutsches Bank, Bank of China, Citibank, and the Price Warehouse. Welcome, Dwarkesh, to the board. We would like to know some more details, and if you can elaborate the budget highlights with your expertise, what exactly the budget is of twenty twenty one of India. We have a budget that before the budget. If I ask you a question, what are your expectations? i think india went through uh, maybe about at its peak india went through a 20% compression in the economy so one of the biggest uh, things that i expected the government to come out was uh, to come out and get the economy growing that was very important for the government to do uh, if i were to look at it before the budget i think my expectations were uh, that the government would look at uh, pushing individuals to spend money they would themselves spend money in india to ensure that the economy starts uh, picking up speed and growing because it takes time for an economy of the size of india to grow you cannot grow that economy we are talking about one of the second or the third largest economy in the world uh, by some metrics so it takes time for them to grow so i wanted them to look at individual and capital sp- expenditure also you want to be careful because indian budget deficit has always been a concern so that's something they have to worry about and also they were do, they had started to do asset demonetization last year so they need to to continue doing that so i expect some of that in it and then finally i expect tax on the rich and the ultra uh, high net worth so my expectation is continuing with what i have seen with the government i would expect them to create infrastructure and create a uh, make in india encouraging business environment so that you know it works well for people individuals can do well businessmen can do well and the economy can grow well we will try the, and the expectations of the individual yes go ahead uh, sorry you are saying something. my expectation from the individual yeah so i also expect the individuals to respond to it uh, by being very mindful of covid covid is not completely gone away by wearing expert ideas it could be either september of this year or january next year so you have to be careful about social distancing hand sanitizing having masks etc so i think this is a very interesting time uh, that i expect both sides to work together we will try to cover the highlight issues in the budget and uh, the key nri section will be covered later right yes we will cover that also also we will cover the opinion of others on later do you think so yeah. you, okay yes, we, yeah we can we'll capture that also what is in for the individual income tax payers i think uh, india's biggest problem historically since the british is been it corruption and and the faceless assessment that honorable prime minister has introduced is going to benefit the country in the pa- form that that corruption can be eliminated and people will be ha- uh, living in a tax environment which is fair across the board so i think the that is a very beneficial thing that they will uh, continue here uh, the second thing that they've done this year is that provident fund interest about 250000 dollars Uh, becomes taxable 
uh, and will be added to your taxable income. Uh, if you get relief because of other factors, that's different, but at least provident fund would be taxable. The benefit of that is twofold. Number one, uh, you don't want a lot of people investing only in provident funds. There's equity markets, etc. And provident fund is a safety net that the government subsidizes. So for a person who's making more than $250,000 of interest on provident fund, the government is not required to subsidize it. So they can then invest in other avenues, uh, which are more conservative avenues, things like insurance products, etc. They don't need to be reliant on the government. So the government has done a very smart thing wherein it has kept uh, its goal of helping uh, the uh, lower strata of this uh, without losing sight of fiscal discipline that it needs to continue. So I think this is a very good step and this has been something I've been concerned about for many decades now. So I think finally government has taken the step to correct it. I think it's a good step in the right direction. The third thing is for citizens of age 75 and above, if you just have uh, pension and interest income only, you are not required to file a tax return. I think that is a very important step because for maybe 50 years, uh, the tax burden has always fell on this people. And for people who don't know, back in the day, tax rates were in the 50s and 60s. So this is a very good step for these people uh, who paid a lot of the, who have taken a lot of the tax burden for the country. I think Honorable Prime Minister and Finance Minister both have realized that they need to be given some relief and this is a great thing so i think in summary they have not changed a lot there have been small changes to how investments are going to be made some subsidies have been taken away from pf and i think it's it, these are the right steps in the right direction bit by bit by which uh, the government can achieve the goal of growth yet uh, not hurting the individual taxpayers can you elaborate some more details for the corporates also? Yes. Uh, I think corporates were, uh, last year there was a big, big uh, uproar about uh, dividends being double and triple tax or tax multiple times. And that was because there was a dividend distribution tax that was there last year. Uh, so this year the government, what it has smartly done is, it has decided to eliminate that dividend distribution tax. What that does is it doesn't tax the same income in multiple hands. Uh, so that gives uh, the corporates the opportunity to go out and give uh, better returns on equities. That also gives a boost to the stock market and wealth creation. And in general, it is a business friendly move. Uh, this is important because I, I personally think that uh, everywhere in the world, that tax was uh, not there in advanced nations, and India had to come in line with those advanced nations. So India, they have the government has done the right step here to abolish that. Also, they are introducing a faceless regime uh, in the corporate uh, sector. Also, now this is going to put the burden on the corporates to manage their tax uh, better. And this is another issue about corruption that has bothered the IT industry for the long time. Uh, income tax uh, in tax implementation industry for a long time. So this fa faceless appeal also gives opportunity to the government to get better revenue out of it. So whatever losses might have occurred from dividend distribution, they are trying to recoup by getting better adherence to tax laws in India. So I think that's a good thing. And then this tax uh, holiday for affordable housing projects. I think one of the biggest costs in India uh, is the cost of living, is the cost of rent or cost of owning a house. And uh, for a lot of poor people, if you reduce that cost, they can spend more money on uh, things like clothing, things like equipment, things like buying a phone. And that will grow the economy. I think this is a very uh, plus point in terms of growing economy in the consumer market. Also, builders are encouraged to build houses. And it's like an infrastructure that the country is building. It's not technically an infrastructure, but it's like building an infrastructure. So that is also going to grow the money and increase the money flow across the country. I think this is a very positive growth-oriented move. Also, there is tax holiday uh, for startups, which will be extended. 
and i think this is good because uh, startups as you've seen we know the amazon story uh, we know the story of uh, uh, facebook these are all startups they started up with an idea they did phenomenally well and then they created wealth for everybody everybody today has stocks and uh, that has grown the uh, housing market that has grown the car market i think that kind of an impact will also be had in india wherein they are encouraging startups and as much as we like to think that india is an it powerhouse i think there are a couple of more steps that india needs to do which is growing startups growing ideas in india we've been great at implementing technology now the time has come to come out with new technology and have innovation in india as well so i think this is a great step flipkart is a great story we need more stories like flipkart in india uh, to be successful yep and then last but not the least i think the most important thing is that uh, they have allowed uh, mna in public sector entity india has a huge coal industry coal reserves india has a lot of natural resources but because the government is involved with it it is not done efficiently or effectively either or or done with the vision so getting uh, public private partnerships or getting uh, private institutions like the tatas getting involved tatas were involved with air india and air india was a very well run show that will help unlock the benefits that that can give the nation and also improve our export situation in some cases so i think it is a win win on both sides the private sector gets to participate in the nation's resources while the government gets much needed funding to reduce the fiscal deficit which they need to keep monitoring so i think the government has taken a great step in doubling down on that so i think corporate across the board in my opinion has been a great step and i expect it to do well in the stock, uh, have a good reflection in the stock market in the long run what is the equalization levy in the international international taxation that's that's been a very interesting question because a lot of people uh, wonder uh, whether equalization levy is allowed or not the world trade organization allows equalization levy part of the goal for equalization levy is very simple what it does is it gives resources to the participants say for example you are running a pipeline and the pipeline runs from china to germany if there is an equalization levy what that does is that distributes the revenue across the countries uh, from where this pipeline is going so i think it's it's a very uh, valid levy approved by the world trade organization and given that india's be- become an it hub there are a lot of people who get who server hosting for by server hosting facilities in india by other services which may not be distributed in india but i still think uh, they need to pay some sort of uh, taxes to the government and because it is a levy the government can build infrastructure the way levies are used is levies do not have to be shared with uh, states so the government can take the levy and build more infrastructure around it so it's a very focused uh, kind of uh, growth it's like saying i am going to put aside Fifty dollars every year uh, to buy a car or buy a house—that kind of uh, situation. So I think it's a very positive step. A little bit misunderstood, but I think it's a very positive. Step. What are the issues with GST then? Uh, the issues with GST is always since its launch is a great idea, uh, but there are uh, a lot of procedural issues that people have struggled with. and i think one of the key procedure of relaxation this year is that uh, the gst audit which was required uh, to be done that burden has been taken away by the government so in most cases the uh, the entities would not be required uh, to get the audit done when you don't have such a regulatory requirement what it does is the cost of doing business goes down and i think this is a great step for honorable prime minister's goal of facilitating uh, make in india i think make in india is a great initiative but it will need a lot of work and and this is a great step in that direction also on the flip side there is now interest on delayed payment so if you have deducted gst but not paid the money into india's treasury 
or India's exchequer, then you are bound to pay dividend. And that is again holding businesses accountable for taxes on a timely basis. It's just not important for people to pay taxes, but they have to pay taxes on a timely basis. The government is a big organization. It also needs its money to run uh, the country. So I think that is a great step. Largely, it is procedural in nature, but I think it will do good for businesses if they behave correctly. So if they are very much uh, willing to be accountable for what businesses they are running, I think it was a good step in the right direction. And then when you know the farmer protests are going on in India in a very big way, uh, are government going to give any leverage or what is been covered specifically for the agriculture and the farmers? I think that is a very, uh, very good question and a very pertinent question. Uh, what I feel right now is people are divided. Uh, my problem is twofold in this area. My personal take, the last agriculture revolution was in the 80s. We are using 30-year-old ideas uh, in the farming industry. And I think that needs to change. Today, uh, incomes in service sector, IT incomes have gone up. Uh, incomes of people in the outsourcing industry have gone up. But the farmers haven't grown up that much. And I think this budget, uh, there is a conscious effort. And let's look at some of the levies that have come up. There is a levy uh, that has been applied on a variety of things. Say, for example, there's a levy on gold and silver. There is a levy on gasoline and petrol. What that has done is the taxes, say you are taxing $100 on petrol or $100 on, say, gasoline, uh, as we call in the U.S., that has been uh, split into two. $85 will be taxes and $15 will be levy. What the government will do is take that levy and then direct it towards agriculture infrastructure. And I think in my personal opinion and what I know about agriculture, one of the bigger issues that agriculture uh, people face are they grow the produce, but the produce has to go to the markets. And you being in the U.S. and all my U.S. Um, uh, viewers would be aware that in the U.S. there's a lot of packaged food. I think part of that is efficient distribution of food. If food gets destroyed, then the cost of food is always going to go up. So what the levy is, the goal of the levy is to get uh, the food to the people in the right way. There are also moves in the railway infrastructure because railway is one of the largest logistical supporter in India to move goods. So I think that, uh, that coupled with this and the fact that... Uh, they are going to give uh, subsidized tools. They are going to give subsidized seeds or discounted seeds to farmers. It's going to create a situation wherein the farmers have the tools to successfully grow the crops, but also ensure that all the crops are sold. They do not lose some of the crops due to issues like storage, logistics, etc. And the, and the finance ministry has been very vocal about them wanting to double farmers' income. And I agree because if everybody in the nation benefits from this new boom, the $5 trillion economy goal that the government has, the farmers have the same right that every other citizen in the country has. So I think the steps are positive. Only the government and the farmers have to come together and come to what understanding as to what works and what does not work. And I would only tell the farmers and the farming uh, farmer related community, be open minded and work with the government. This is your government. You chose the government and this can be easily resolved. I don't think there are big issues. It's just a matter of sitting down and working with it. We need change. We have been doing the same thing for 30 years. And as they say, same of the old is not going to work. We won the 1983 World Cup when Kapil Dev and Gavaskar did not have a supporting staff. Today, the supporting staff is larger than the cricket team. If that cricket has changed, why not the farmers' lives and the farmers' structure? So I think it's, 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 it's something really worth thinking about. Yep. Uh, there are a couple of more questions for you. Uh, before we go with any other, can we... Uh, give something what is in for the NRIs and expects? 
Okay, I think for the NRIs and expats, I think it's a very uh, it's a very good uh, budget from a couple of viewpoints. Uh, foreign banks who can invest in capital markets and can set up trading hubs in India. What that does is say I trade equities in the US, I can set up a trading hub in India and trade equities there. So for people who want to uh, who want to go back to India, spend time with family, etc., they can uh, take advantage of this and undertake their activities from India versus here. So there are uh, the goal is that uh, they are going to set up for a foreign private investment route wherein people can go to India and then do activities similar to what they do here based on internet usage so that you know they don't need to be physically here uh, and they can enjoy their family time. I, I'm sure you came to this country many, many years ago. Part of that whole sacrifice is missing family. Uh, it's a big, uh, my biggest regret is all my family is grown up. So you always have regrets and people who want to make that call or who have not missed on family members growing up or their parents aging, this is a great opportunity for them to take advantage of that. The other thing is also India setting up aircraft leasing centers. I think aircraft leasing center is a good uh, financial uh, benefit uh, that Ireland and China have built their economies around. So China has a section wherein aircraft leasing is big. China buys aircraft from Boeing and Airbus and then leases them out. It's a, it's a great uh, avenue to grow more things. We have engineers. So if tomorrow the leasing centers needs to be changed into service centers for these highly uh, skilled engineering products, India has the skill set to grow it into a bigger economy. And who better to lead it than our NRIs? Because our NRIs are at Boeing, our NRIs are involved with Airbus. I think that's a, that's a great thing in my mind. And then NRI relief on foreign retirement funds. Uh, the risk of double taxation is one thing which bothers people. So the chances that uh, you don't want to retire in a cold Northeast and you don't want to retire in Florida, then India is another option for you, right? The same old, uh, as, as they say for Gujaratis, is Fafada Jalevi, for a Punjabi, is for Paratha. Same home, <laughs> home cooked food, but retirement in India, wherein you go back and relive what you lived for the first 25 30 years. I think that's a great move. And also, uh, NRIs will be allowed to incorporate OPCs, and OPCs will be uh, allowed to grow without any restrictions. So, that is another great avenue for uh, people to set up their own uh, organizations and grow in India because. Everybody works hard, but once you made a certain amount of achievements in the U.S., if you want to go back to India and do something low-key, that's another opportunity. So the government is encouraging India's best product back. It's NRIs. And so I think it's a, it's a great move. There's a lot in it for the NRI. The government is, it's a long-term signal, but I think government is saying you're welcome back, so to say. And I think that was a problem before wherein NRIs were more tourists. Today, government says, come in and join the Make in India or Grow India bandwagon. I think it's a very positive step. What exactly really happened? In the summary of the... I think, yeah, I go think ahead. If, if you were to ask me what really happened is, you see, in this time, the government decided, you know what, we have a problem. And the problem is that the growth has slowed down. We need to grow it faster. India went through uh, the demonetization and clearing of the uh, the issues with bad currencies that we had. India went through the process of uh, GST when it wanted to uh, eliminate corruption and bring the economy, the uh, white money economy and the black money economy together. And that can be seen. Indian GDP before was quoted at 1.9 to 2 trillion dollars today is close to 3 trillion dollars and that works well because internationally it benefits you to have size when you have size there are more people willing to lend you money at a cheaper rate if you went to a bank today uh, mr rawal i think if you ask for 100000 dollars the treatment would be different if you're asking for 100 million dollars the treatment would be different and i think 
showing the size of the Indian economy, merging it is great, and then growing it to the $5 trillion. So I think the government has taken bit by bit steps and very constructive steps uh, to, to get to a target of 10 to 11% GDP growth. And that is what they have done. They have allowed more expenditure. So the fiscal discipline of spending less has been put aside. And the government has said, we want to grow the economy. We are ready to spend the extra $10, $15 that needs to be done or 10 or 3 4 5% more money than we have. But we want to grow the economy. And I think that is very critical. It is important for three reasons. One, uh, China for the longest time has carried the burden of producing the world's goods and products. And I think their own consumers are consuming more and more. So India coming online and India, I think, is the only country in the world that can uh, assist the world in big scale manufacturing, given its size and the skill set it has. So this budget is going to work towards India becoming an important partner in world trade. And I think that is the right thing. It reduces the burden on China. And China can grow its own economy as well, focusing on what it, uh, people need. So it's a great visionary statement by uh, Prime Minister Modi. Also, the U.S. government and the India government, they work together uh, very closely over the relations. So I think it's a step in the right direction to keep growing those relations. Uh, President Trump and Honorable Prime Minister Modi had a great friendship. Uh, the current uh, vice, pres uh, the current president and the former vice president had a, have a relationship. So I think it augurs well uh, strategically to open up the economy and grow and contribute to the needs of the Western world. So I think that's great. You can look at the first uh, You can look at the first thing that comes to my mind is we've opened up the insurance sector to 75% foreign investments, and we are going to privatize two banks. I think that's a big thing because it gives you uh, two banks, which two more banks that can become world-class by size and by uh, working environment. We already have a bank like an HDFC. Uh, so you want that to have banks represent a country well. So you have to do that. And then also you have to look at uh, solid financial planning for people because the most impacted people are the individuals who need to recover from COVID. If individuals do not recover from COVID, you have a problem. How does an individual recover from COVID? You have to identify, you have to attack four key issues. First one is insurance needs because uh, the family uh, members who earn money have to be insured, have to be covered so that if something happens tomorrow to them, they are uh, they get the money and life goes on yes you will miss the person but life goes on that's one two is investments you need investments because you need to buy you need to keep improving your lifestyle if i gave you uh, the same food every day uh, it will be a different uh, and food and i think that is critical so investments give you that lifestyle incentive that is needed you also need to have life goal funding and finally you also need to have a proper retirement structure and i think what is happening is what the government has done is laid the foundation for a world-class insurance organization in the country by asking them to come in because what we have is is largely uh, a split section so if you have world leader institutions coming in that sector that's going to help individuals the other thing that we've done is medical infrastructure and healthcare. that has been old it's been 50 60 years old infrastructure we have the one of our best exports is doctors there are so many successful doctors in america who sitting here are giving back to the nation we also need to harness doctors in india by giving them the best of tools and also to bring awareness among uh, individual. A longer life means uh, you have a fulfilling life. Otherwise, if you work till 70 and you have 5 or 10 years with your family, that is, is not the right approach. So I think the government has looked at that in a very correct way. And it also grows the country because if you spend money on building housing, you spend the money building, money building hospital, it's going to come and help uh, a village only. A village will grow more 
their life will be enriched. So I think that's a great idea that the government has taken. And then the customs duty has been managed. I think that is a very beautiful thing. The steel industry feels they don't longer need protection. But they've taken some of the steel industry uh, customs duties away. While there are some industries where still protection is needed, about 28 to 30 items, the government has continued to give them protection. The goal is not to protect them indefinitely, but the goal is for them to become to have world class skill sets. Indians in America have proved that they have world class skill sets. I think it's time Indians in India also do that with their businesses and with their uh, with their growth policies. Gone are the days when you do tax management. Today the day is you have a key skill set. You compete on the world uh, level. And the government is committed to giving them to grow. And I'm very happy that the government has taken this step. And then the cess on agriculture, which we talked about before. The levy of the cess on agriculture is very helpful because I know that the current government is very focused on helping agriculture. They've tried to make changes. And a lot of people uh, have said, why do you change something if it's not broken? But if something is as old as the 80s, you need to change. And my cricket analogy is perfect, right? We played cricket a different way in 83. We play cricket differently today. The Australia Test Series will prove that, that you need to change your times. So I think I think the government has taken a bold but the right step wherein they've said, we are going to shake this up. And I think the farmer uh, the farmer group has to go back and tell the government what they what their fears are, what is it that they would like to have. And I think it's a, it's a, it should be a healthy discussion. It's going to be so I cannot also solve by saying, let's leave the old thing in place. So I think that's a great thing. And doubling of this investment, I think that in my mind is the best thing. If I remember the figures correctly, they are going to unleash about 165,000 crores. That's a lot of uh, disinvestment and a lot of opportunity for uh, the leading conglomerates like the Tatas, uh, the uh, Mahindras, the Kiloskars, etc., who, who've done a great job uh, managing uh, their businesses in light mental competition. So I think it's 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 a great step there. So it's a, it, we've, it, there's a lot to cover, but I think we have covered uh, what we've covered should give people a good idea as to the initiatives, uh, which are well-meaning by the government. And I believe it will benefit all. The thing is, the government is trying to implement in the right earnest. People have to understand that spirit and do their job. As they say in Hindi, Kali do hat se bachti. So both have to, the government and the citizens of India have come together to do this. And it's just a friendly reminder to Indian, uh, to the people in India and my viewers here that if you look at the two, 2000 uh, plus year history, there are three countries will be the largest countries in the world. India for nearly a thousand years, China for a thousand years, and America for 150 years. So there is, we've done it in the past. This is a great move uh, to re, uh, redo the world map from a finance and trade perspective. And make in India you know, is still being pushed. I don't think an honorable prime minister or the Honorable Finance Minister have given up on them. These are great positive steps. Uh, at the end, we would like to wrap it up. It's almost the time to conclude it. Uh, can you give your closing statement what exactly the summarize of this whole budget is for 2021? I think I would use something that I got from uh, uh, somebody who's a stockbroker and an indirect tax practitioner in the heart of the Lal Street. I think he summed it up this way. He says it's a bold gamble with fiscal deficit on one side and growth of India on the other side. Asset monetization will help in the government uh, manage fiscal deficit and growth and, and uh, private investment will further fuel a virtual growth cycle. So, and I expect huge private investments are being in the works and I expect them to give India high octane growth. I think if you have to look at it, there are three words which I will use. Growth, growth, growth. <laughs> that is all the government is thinking about. And I think it's, it's a very well-balanced and a well-thought-out budget. Wow. 
So you are already convinced with the budget, right? I'm convinced it's the right steps. The government has to execute. The people have to work with it. And I think we will go the right way. Both parties have to work, and I think it's doable. There is, uh, they have not done, they have been aggressive, and I like aggressive. It's like uh, Rohit Sharma coming out and hitting sixes. That's the way I like it. <laughs> That's the way this is. Uh, with that note of the Rohit Sharma hitting the sixes, this budget is, uh, by the view of Dwarkesh Thread, is fantastic. And uh, looking forward more with the conversation in the coming. Uh, week with your expert comments more detailed with uh, we just uh, dropped out uh, custom duties right so yeah i think we we did have a brief chat do you want me to yeah so that again? next week i will uh, call you and uh, viewers uh, we will let you know that we will be covering this more in more details with uh, all kind of aspects and with that note i would like to end this interview thank you dwarkes trivedi to joining us for the bharat fm Thank you. I think thank you for having me and uh, look forward to our next session. Thank you. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jhumega Bharat. ये है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत